I'm here to talk about the most important five seconds of your day. Take a moment and imagine five seconds. I know it might sound silly, but what does five seconds mean to you? For example, I think some of the stuff that I run into every single day may include, should I run that yellow light? Should I hit snooze or not? Should I swipe left or swipe right? <laughs> should I eat the cheese that fell on the floor? But what if I told you there was a five second decision that meant clean air, clean water, farmable lands, a sustainable society, a better standard of life? Well, that sounds great, doesn't it? Because on a global scale, there is. There's a five second decision that can change the world. There's a five second decision that we make every day, multiple times a day. I'm gonna tell you what that five second decision is. Walking up to these. I want you to think about what you've thrown away today. I know it might sound innocuous or unimportant, small, minuscule even. But remember, seven and a half billion people make this decision every single day. The average American throws away four and a half pounds of waste every single day, and that number is growing exponentially. Let me break it down for you. 300 million Americans, four and a half pounds of waste every day. Together, we generate over one billion pounds of garbage every single day, seven days of the week, 365 days of the year. So take a moment and visualize it. Think about that moment. You're walking up to the bins. Are you paying attention? What are you feeling? Most of the time, we don't even realize what's going on. Look, it's hard, I get that. You're running behind, maybe you're late to work, you're trying to buy a coffee. Is this compostable, is this recyclable? I see some cups in the landfill, screw it. I get that. I'm guilty of that. But speaking frankly, I'm not some avid academic or super go green ultra enthusiast. I'm human. I'm busy and I'm tired, and I have deadlines. Sometimes you feel like, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> but just like I'm human, I'm one human. My trash doesn't make a difference. My trash doesn't matter. Sometimes it feels like some hippie stuff. But we have to remember that trash is a timeless problem, and it begins with us as individuals. Because we as humans, we consume and we dispose. So if we want the clean air, clean water, better standard of life, we have to remember what the profound impacts of this five second decision are. In order to understand that, we need to begin by breaking down the ecosystem of waste. I mentioned earlier that the average American throws away four and a half pounds of waste. Now about a third of that we are composting and recycling, so hats off to us. But the other three pounds that we put into landfill, how much of that do you think belongs in there? 75% of what we throw away can be composted or recycled, meaning 75% of what we throw away can be recovered. On a US scale, that's over 500 million pounds of waste that we could repurpose and reuse sustainably back into our economy. But we don't. And that's a direct consequence of us not taking those five seconds. That's a direct consequence of us being mindless. So we have to think about what's the next step? How do we move forward from here? You see, when you landfill, your waste isn't actually sorted, it's just dumped. And as these materials in the landfills begin to break down, they release about equal parts methane and CO2. We've all heard the rhetoric on CO2. We've all heard the rhetoric 
on global warming, but it's my job, I'm here to remind you that they are key culprits. Methane is 25 times more potent at trapping heat in the atmosphere than CO2. 25 times more swift in this sort of inevitable race to make our planet more like a thermos cup. Great for coffee, but not so much where you live. So up until this point, we get it. Compost and recycle, let's make these five second decisions. But if we know that composting and recycling are objectively better, environmentally and financially, why is landfill still the most prevalent? The science is there. Problems with your waste streams begin with what you throw away. So why aren't we doing better? The US, leader of the free world. We have the biggest tech companies. We've got the biggest economy. We're the best at sports. We're really good at a lot of things, but throwing away our trash is not something that we're very good at. I wanted to give you guys a moment to find us. I'm used to seeing us at the top, but we come in 18th place. So why is it that we struggle to divert our waste? And I think this problem, it comes down to twofold. On one hand, we aren't making those five second decisions. You know that classic image, turtle in a six pack, trapped and gonna die? That happens because we don't make those five second decisions. But on the other hand, the waste infrastructure is not there to support us. The players who control the waste industry are not interested in seeing us succeed. They're not interested in seeing us throw our waste away better. I mean, how can we when this is what we're working with? This is where it gets a little bit more tricky. Everyone knows that you get your garbage picked up by waste haulers. The garbage trucks, they're called waste haulers. But what you don't know is that these few nationwide corporations control the entire waste industry. And when I say few, in the US, I mean two. These two companies have been around for a long time. And with their legacy, they've dipped their fingers in the entire waste ecosystem. You can think of them as an old boys club. Suits, caviar, yachts, and a lot of behind the door deals. Decades ago, they invested early, went out and bought up all of the landfills. They bought a lot of cheap American soil and implemented space for future landfills. They devoted acres and acres upon. So in order to fill these landfills, they had to go out, standardize, and monopolize the entire waste hauling industry. That makes sense, right? You invested in landfills, and now you want to fill them up. So you're going to go out and create the trucks and infrastructure to do that. So you may be asking, what about compost and recycling? Well, you see, compost and recycling, they're much weaker players. They're fragmented. Compost and recycling streams are usually managed by smaller local companies. And these companies have to spend a lot of money to create and maintain their facilities. So they have to go to the big corporations and they say, hey, can you pick up my compost and recycling as you pick up your landfill? I'll strike you a deal. Here, I'll pay you a tip. So these old boys, these corporations, they may pick it all up, but they certainly aren't incentivized into putting dollars into helping us do a better job. Do you think decades later, we wouldn't be much smarter about doing our waste, similarly to those other countries, if that was what was important to them? We have to really explore why we're set with the situations that we have. Right now, we may imagine a future, right? You imagine a future that perhaps we throw away 10% of our waste just a little bit better. And we can take a look at how this affects these monopolies, right? So regardless of the clean air, clean water, better standard of life, these monopolies, they're more interested in the economics of it all. They're more interested in making money. They may pay lip service to be sustainable and the environment, but they make the big bucks from landfill at the end of the day. They are massive money-making monopolies 
that profit off of our mindlessness. So going back to the 10% that we talked about, imagine the upstream effects if we were to just throw away our waste just a little bit smarter. This industry is worth billions and billions of dollars. There's no shortage of money here. So what would happen? Just like when you donate, you get to choose who you support. Whenever you throw away your waste into compost or recycling, you're putting dollars into companies that do believe in sustainability and innovation. You're putting dollars into companies that believe in growing a better standard of life. So if you want the clean air, clean water, better standard of life, you have to remember that it comes on an individual basis. I may not have all the facts down perfect, but this industry is purposefully opaque. We are transparent. However, the reason why we struggle, it's not because we don't know. It's not because we don't care. It's not because it's hard. It's because we're unaware. So if we want to turn that experience in front of the bins from a frustrating, awful, mind-numbing experience, then we have to be a little bit more cognizant of what the next steps are. What I mean by that is that in order for us to make this change, I take five seconds every single day and I do my best to throw that waste away. But it's a habit that I'm trying to develop, no different than looking left and right before I cross the street. It's a habit that we should share. Encourage your friends, your family, encourage yourself. Take the five seconds and be empowered knowing that your choice does make a difference. That your choice does matter. Your five seconds affects demand. Your five seconds, with my five seconds, can change the world. Thank you.